Hey everybody, welcome to your lactate threshold explainer. We talk about lactate threshold on this channel from time to time and it always gets the comments going. We love that and we love engaging in the comment section, but I thought it would be good to do a bit of a deep dive on a few of the definitions that we need as we talk about how to train well over time. So if that's what this is, stick around and you'll learn something. It is hard to come up with the definition and a list of definitions that everybody universally agrees on without a little bit of argument. We don't mind those arguments. We welcome them, especially here in the comment section. But I want you to know everything I say today comes from Joe Friel's blog or a bunch of fancy scientific articles that are all going to be listed in the description of this video. So if you're not sure where this information comes from, if you want to do an even deeper dive, just check out the description below and you'll find links to everything I'm talking about today and a ton more. First thing on the list today is aerobic threshold. This is a relatively easy pace of running. You should be a well-trained athlete, should be able to run at your aerobic threshold for a couple of hours and still feel okay. It is roughly 60% of your aerobic capacity. That's about 70% of your maximum heart rate or about 80% of your lactate threshold. I warned you this was gonna be a bit of a deep dive. That's what it is. Basically, your aerobic threshold is a pretty good, easy pace. So what happens there is lactate starts to build up in your muscles a little bit more than your resting level. So you're working, but you're not working very hard. You can keep at that pace, at that level of work for quite a long time and still feel okay. A good ballpark for how to calculate this based on your lactate threshold, and we're gonna to get to that lactate threshold calculation, is if you subtract about 30 beats per minute from that lactate threshold heart rate, that's your aerobic threshold. The next definition is your anaerobic threshold. So not aerobic threshold, your anaerobic threshold. In a perfect world, this gets measured in a lab on a treadmill with an oxygen mask over your face. And you measure the amount of oxygen going in and the amount of oxygen coming out. And the difference in those, the amount of oxygen going in and out, is the amount of oxygen you use while you're on that treadmill during the test. This is a remarkable thing because in this test, you ramp up your effort. At the beginning, you're at a relatively easy effort. You're burning fat. Great, no problem. But as you ramp up, you start to change that fuel source from fat to glycogen stores. That moment when you transition from burning mostly fat to burning mostly glycogen, well, that is your anaerobic threshold. This is where my interest in this stuff really gets us. Is that anaerobic threshold, the pace at which you can hold for about an hour? You're burning those glycogen cells. You're not burning fat anymore for most of us. And how long can you hold that, what's sometimes called redlining effect, is really important, especially if you're doing these kind of road races that I've been up to lately where I'm at the half marathon-ish distance and I'm going really, really hard for as long as I can. At that about 60 minute mark, you can really feel a difference in what your body is capable. And being able to prolong that threshold for as long as you can can be the difference in a PB or not a PB. Finishing strong with a big smile on your face or a grimace in my case. There's a pretty common test you can use, a 20 minute test to measure your anaerobic threshold if you don't have access to a sports lab and a, a cool oxygen mask and a scientist with a clipboard. Now that anaerobic threshold is sometimes used interchangeably with lactate threshold, but they are a little bit different only in how they're measured. Practically, they turn out to be mostly the same. That anaerobic threshold I just talked to you about is measured by oxygen in versus oxygen out, right? And the fuel changeover between fat to glycogen. Now, your lactate threshold is measured by the amount of lactate in your muscles. Once it gets to four millimoles per liter, that's when you're at that lactate threshold. Now, how much is four millimoles per liter? Like a teeny tiny little itty bitty amount, almost none at all, but enough to measure at four millimoles per liter. Now. How do you know what that means? Well, you're gonna be able to hold it. A well-trained athlete can hold it for an hour or so. Extending it a few minutes one way or the other, sure, you can do that based on training and how well you condition yourself to run at that threshold. But the real key is to actually increase the speed at which you move while you're at that lactate threshold. That allows you to cover more distance in the hour before the wheels start to fall off the bus. Now, there is lots of running that happens above your lactate threshold but it doesn't happen for very long. For most of us, we're talking about three minutes, four minutes above that lactate threshold, and then we have no choice but to slow down. Now, lactate threshold is sometimes referred to interchangeably with lactic acid. This is a mistake for most of us. Even I do it at times, lots of us do, but it isn't technically accurate. Sometimes we even say things like, oh, you've got lactic acid in your blood and that's what 
what's causing you to slow down. That's what's causing the burning sensation in your muscles. This is technically inaccurate. You don't have lactic acid in your blood. You might have lactate building up in your muscles. That's what's causing the burning feeling. But you definitely don't have lactic acid built up in your blood if you are watching this video. That's a whole other thing. Now, some people tell us all the time that it's because of that lactate buildup in their muscles that they're sore the day after a big run. That is also inaccurate, technically. The lactate in your muscles is causing that burning feeling and it is an acidic response, which is where the idea of lactic acid comes from. So while you're running, you get that burning feeling in your muscles. That is lactate increasing the amount of acid in your muscles. That is causing that burning feeling and eventually it will cause you to slow down. That is not the same. It is not accurate to say that you've got lactic acid in your blood. I have made that mistake. I have heard about it in the comments. Thank you for your help. I mean that. So what does it all mean? These are the definitions, but like, what do you do with it? Here's the thing. These are all represented by different heart rate zones or ranges. And so you know if you're in your aerobic or anaerobic zone, not based on oxygen input or output, not while you're out on a run, not in your training plan. You don't have that information in real time. You do have heart rate information, and that's the important bit as it relates to these threshold numbers and these definitions. So what I want you to do is click on this video over my shoulder. It's going to give you a full breakdown of your heart rate zones, as well as how to calculate that lactate threshold. I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this trail run. I hope you're having a great time.